Actually, it was I was around about mm, seven or eight years old, and uh, always used to love watching it on the on the TV. You know, just absolutely glued to the TV, and then you know the same old thing. Christmas time, you know, got a present, got a, a six foot table, and uh, was hooked ever since. And that's how it started. Uh, so when did it start becoming obviously from sort of a hobby to then becoming a lot more serious? Uh, it was probably the, the last year of school for me. Um, you know, when I was 14, 15, I was playing truant quite a lot and basically just coming in here because all I wanted to do was play snooker. Didn't care about my education or anything like that. All I wanted to do, and I knew what I wanted to do, was be a pro snooker player um, because obviously I'd shown the talent before that, you know, at the ages of 12 and 13. So I already had, like, kind of sponsors lined up in place to, to, to help me forward. But it was only at 15 and 16 that I realised that it's, it's all or nothing because I had no education to fall back on. So I knew it was a big gamble. Right. I mean, does that, looking back, do you think that was the right decision? Yes. For, as it's turned out, it, it was a, a gamble that's worked for me. Yeah, without a doubt. Pro around sort of 1992, I think. Yeah, I was 17 when I turned 17. pro. I mean, that was the same year. People like Higgins. Yeah, well, I, I'm the same age as Higgins and, and O'Sullivan and Mark Williams and Steve Lee. Uh, uh, there's probably one or two that I've missed as well. But at that particular, my age bracket, was, it was the toughest time in snooker to be a junior because you had all these great players as well. There's one or two others that you won't have heard of that have just gone by the wayside, but they were probably, I mean, I can think of one that was actually even better than Ronnie um, as a junior. Who's that? And uh, his name was Chris Scanlon. And uh, he, I think they they actually used to practice together as juniors, uh, uh, him and Ronnie. And uh, I played Chris Scanlon numerous times as a junior and could not get near him. He was fantastic. But I think it was his lifestyle that, that led him to finally quit snooker, and, uh, which was a shame, really, because he was a great player. So obviously the players we've mentioned, you know, they've managed to make sort of, they managed to make quite an immediate impact into the game. Why weren't you able to do that? Why weren't you able to? Yeah, it, it, it's. I've probably gone down the same line as the guy I've just mentioned with Chris Scanlon. I, I, my, my attitude towards it, getting towards 18, 19, 20, was, was terrible. You know, I didn't have the same drive that they had. I didn't have the same passion that they had because, you know, when you're at that age, you just want to be going out and, and you know, living the life. And uh, Snooker took a back seat for me, and that's where I personally think it went wrong for me. Right. So, when did it, when did that start becoming? When did you start realizing that? Oh, you know, I'm actually going to have to start working yeah, a lot harder. Yeah. Even even though 18, 19, 20, you know, I didn't perhaps put as much effort in as as I should have done. I was still making money from the game, so that would always support me, you know. Um, and and basically, all through the tw all through my twenties was exactly the same as well. Um, it, I was just content with earning the money that I was earning and not particularly, you know, wanting to drive myself forward um, to get into the top 32, top 16, which would, which these guys were at at that stage. Whereabouts are you in that, at that stage? At that wise? stage, you know, it, I think if uh, if I remember right, at 21, Ronnie was kind of maybe, uh, I don't know, he was top 10 definitely. And I think at that time there was 700 pros. And I think maybe I was about, I don't know, in the top 100 or something. Um, Something like that, I can't exactly remember. So why, why was there that, that lack of motivation there? Why, why? It, it, like I say, it was just my lifestyle. Like, I, liked, I just liked going out and, and I liked drinking and I liked socialising and, and, uh, you know, and, and that, was, that was my problem. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, whereas, you know, the top guys have put, put probably six hours a day in, you know, six days a week. I probably put uh, six hours in a week in, you know. And uh, that was uh, obviously because if you, you, you know, now now I've realised, you know, in hindsight, that if you don't put the work in, you don't get the rewards. Whereas I used to think, oh well, I've got all this natural talent, I can just put a little bit of time in, and I can just do it. But I realise now that's not, not the case. It took you eleven attempts to actually win a round at a ranking event. Oh right, I get you. Um, no, what it was, obviously, I got to qualify, you know, for these final stages. And uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. It was uh, 11 ranking events at the final stages, which is actually called the first round proper. But obviously, I'd come through numerous qualifying rounds before that. 
and uh, I, I lost, a, yeah, like, I think it was 11 times on the trot, uh, the first round proper. It was it was something like, I, I, I drew Ronnie three times, uh, John Higgins three times, Hendry three times, it was something silly like that. You know, playing the best players in the world and uh, in the first round, which was ridiculously unlucky. But uh, I had a couple of chances and, uh, and, and blew it, really. But, uh, yeah, I, par- I partly blame the draw for that. Do you think you've been quite unlucky? I mean, you've played the World Championship two times before. And you've 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 landed Matt Williams yeah. and Andrew. I mean, uh, I don't I don't I don't particularly think I've been very lucky when it comes to the uh, final stages of you know the draws. Um, you know, like I said, I got I had Mark Williams first time. He was world number one, winning everything, and uh, he went on to win that that year. And then Stephen Hendry, who was still a great player in those days, you know, he, he was capable of winning the World Championships. I drew him the next very next year and uh, didn't settle at all in the Crucible because it's such an intimidating atmosphere and uh, got buried both times. Yeah, how did you feel both matches went? I mean, obviously you only got oh, two terrible. games in each. Shocking. Um, I was first, first time I was so nervous. So nervous in fact that I nearly actually fell down the Crucible steps when they introduced me. I missed a step and uh, luckily I didn't fall but it was, it was close. But I was so nervous it was, it was untrue. Why? Why was the nerves? Just the same. Just because it's the biggest, the biggest tournament in the world. Every all your everyone's eyes are on you. It's you know you don't want to make yourself look like an idiot on TV. All the negatives come into your head instead of the positives. So I mean, is, is this sort of down to sort of TV shyness or? Yeah, yeah. I've always struggled. I've always struggled on the TV, I, up until recently. Um, I, you know, I just don't know what it is. It, it, it was, it was partly the lighting for me, because you used to just like a canopy light like that or you know like a slightly bigger version and then all of a sudden when you got the TV you, you, you've got you know a whole ceiling full of lights which is so high up projects a different kind of light it makes the table look different and uh, I was just completely lost on it you know and so what it, it inspired me to uh, get exactly the same setup in in, in the match room there right. um, and ever since then I've been far more comfortable on TV. I mean, the fact you weren't winning um, at that stage when, when you got to those sort of stages. You know, what was what was your motivation to keep on playing? Because obviously, you obviously want to get to those. Yeah, it was. I think, um, I you know, the, the the whole buzz of being in a venue, you know, on the final stages and, and the TV cameras there. That's that's what you play snooker for. You know, the atmosphere. And uh, you know, I knew that one day I'd, I'd get past that hurdle and. Uh, like I say, I, you know, I was I was still earning decent money from the game, and you know, for for me anyway, and uh, that that inspires you as well.